Hello there, I am Jimmy Elizondo from Real World Ranching, where my goal is to help you achieve the maximum profitability while improving your land the fastest. I have been asked about the use of urea in a ruminant's ration. I am a dairy nutritionist and I have done a lot of field work with over 17, 20 years experience in large confined dairies. And I know that there are many companies out there offering protein supplements with 100 or even 130% protein content. What does that mean? We know that it will be difficult to get to 100% protein as there are other ingredients to account for. So if you are interested in this or if you know anyone else that could benefit from this podcast, please share the link and that can help them. And I would like to help as many people as possible. First, we need to know that non-protein nitrogen, which is in urea, is just that, nitrogen, without it being assembled yet into amino acids. A long string of amino acids together forms a real protein, and is the reason why non-protein nitrogen is also called funny protein, as it is not a real protein, but a protein equivalent that requires energy to form an amino acid and then a real protein. Urea contains around 40%, 46% nitrogen and requires sulfur for the rumen microorganisms to convert it into amino acids. And that is why we need to add ammonium sulfate to it. Because non-protein nitrogen sources are usually cheaper than real protein from oil seed mills or alfalfa hay, they can be used when convenient, but with great caution. There are many horror stories out about someone losing cattle, sheep, or goats to urea poisoning. I even have had people talk, tell me about horses being poisoned, poisoned by it. The rapid, rapidly available nitrogen in urea creates ammonia, and if it's fast enough, it can be an excess in the rumen which raises the pH of the rumen and can create bloat. It also can go into the bloodstream where it will take the place of hemoglobin, displacing oxygen, turning the blood chocolate color, and the animal can die. It is the same process or problem that happens with nitrates in the water, which produces the blue baby syndrome in humans. This also means that there needs to be an equally rapidly available energy source at the same time that the non-protein nitrogen for it to be converted into real protein without causing health or conver conversion efficiency problems. With all of this that I have said, you may ask, why go to the trouble and management to use NPN if it has so many risks, non-protein nitrogen? Well, first we need to differentiate between rumen available nitrogen and rumen unavailable nitrogen, or bypass, rumen bypass nitrogen. And remember that fiber gets digested in the rumen. Whatever is not digested in the rumen will come out as in the poop as undigested fiber. This means that a little urea could help if done well. Now we need to know that all sources of protein contain both available and unavailable nitrogen in the rumen, some more than others. Urea is available in the rumen, all of it. We can get a good result in both health and economy by using a small amount of urea with a very small amount of ammonium sulfate to aid the microorganisms in the rumen to synthesize proteins. Plus, there needs to be a rapidly available energy source like ground corn. This usually means a little corn, a little urea, a little ammonium sulfate, and soybean meal or cottonseed meal, all mixed and fed on an individual basis daily. Make sure feed bunk space is enough so that all animals get their share. Also know that young animals cannot make good use of urea and could be poisoned. I know that you can also feed it on a rainproof container but then you need to add salt to the mixture to regulate consumption. And the salt inhibits the rumen microorganisms 
that you want to uh, help them grow to digest the fiber. So by adding add salt, you're destroying them. So I prefer the former method of daily feeding. It is necessary when feeding non-protein nitrogen sources to slowly increase the amount of them so that the rumen microorganisms can adjust their numbers to synthesize protein. This should be done over a long enough period, like a small increment every week, to finish in five weeks at the level you want to get. There are certain percentage, percentages restrictions on the feeding of non-protein nitrogen that you can look up on the internet. If you personally make sure the mixture is well done and your livestock are consuming their share individually, then it may be good for you to use a non-protein nitrogen source, taking great, great care. If not, then I would prefer to go with a natural protein source like cow cubes at 41% of uh, cottonseed meal or soybean meal at 47%, or even better, number one of alpha hay at 20% protein. The idea is to maintain the rumen of your livestock functioning well, even when their diet is made up of low protein, high fiber stockpile grasses that do not have that magical seven to 8% protein content on a dry matter basis. As I always explain to my total grazing program students, use the cheapest alternative available, considering not only cost per pound of supplement, but also the results to make a total analysis before deciding on which way to make up for the protein deficiency you have. Now, not all stockpile forages require a protein supplement, like tall fescue, that doesn't require it or perennial ryegrass or many ryegrasses. So some companies out there sell a slow release non-protein nitrogen, such as Buret, which seems to work better due to the slow release as opposed to the very fast release of the nitrogen in urea. Conclusion and recap. Number one, urea or any other source of NPN can be used with great care and they do require extra energy to transform the nitrogen to a real protein. They do help fiber digestion, but many times it is better to feed a real protein. At least this has been my experience in over 40 some years doing it. Two, as urea is rapidly available in the rumen, you need an equally rapidly available energy source so that the microorganisms have enough energy available to transform the ammonia to real protein. Three, sulfur is absolutely needed for the microorganisms in the rumen to synthesize real proteins out of non-protein nitrogen. Four, if non-protein ni nitrogen supplements get wet and your livestock consume them, they can bloat or die from nitrate poisoning. Five, Buret or slow release urea seems to bypass these problems and gives a better result, but it still has no energy in it. Energy content. Six, I much prefer not to use urea as I get much better results without it. Usually high quality alfalfa hay or organic soybean meal. Okay, now you know my opinion on the use of urea and why I think this way. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Thank you and see you next time. Make sure to subscribe to the podcast in Spotify, iTunes, or YouTube. You can also join us on the weekly email at www.rwranching.com slash join. Have a great day.